good day to you and welcome to our garden here in Moraga. My name is Al Kite and we're doing a series of short videos on dimensions of beauty in the California native plant garden. Today's topic is the beauty of new life and I think that's appropriate title because today we're talking about March and April which are the months where I see more day-by-day -day change in, in the garden than any other time. And for example, there's new shoots coming out, there's new leaves, new buds, new blooms, new animals emerging, there's just new life everywhere. And I think one of the, I think it's my favorite uh, months of the year in the garden. And uh, I think one of the most obvious changes is there's a big jump in the amount of color we have in the garden. Obviously that's due to the fact that many plants start blooming this time of year, but it's particularly due to the fact that at least three uh, plants that I'm particularly interested in start blooming. And they give me what I've titled, I, I've used the term uh, splashy long bloomers to describe this category. What's a long bloomer? Well, to me it's a plant that is going to hold its bloom for at least two months. Splashy, that means I should see splashes of color. Like with this uh, sulfur buckwheat, I see more bloom color than I do leaf color. And so if I were an artist sitting down, I could take a paintbrush and I could splash uh, strokes of yellow, orange, white, and purple and, and, and have a very gala painting. And so I'd like plants to give me a lot of color. And the three that come to mind that, that start in March and April Starts with the poppies in March, giving me a nice orange color everywhere, and then the sulfur buckwheat kick in, the, and, and the white monkey flower, Mimulus bifidus. And those three, combined with the verbena that's already blooming, gives me a great foundation in color for the next few months for four of those plants. Uh, and, and of course, there are others that come along. Here in the back, we have an open woodland, and so, the plants are spaced enough so that I can have this color pretty much throughout the, the plant community. In the front, we have a chaparral, so we're talking more about a border. And sometimes I invite, uh, I leave some shrubs vacant in certain areas, and I, so there's areas for these plant colors to move into. Let's go look at that chaparral. Out here in front, we see a, a border with some of the same plants and the same colors that we saw in the open woodland. But there's some additional plants as well that I want to talk about out here. And they serve one of two purposes. Some of them are a backup to the colors that we already have. For example, one of my long bloomers may not be a long bloomer that year. It might be a bad year for it. To have another plant of the same color there is ideal. Uh, and some of the other plants provide their own unique uh, interpretation of color, a little maybe between the colors that we have. They, en they enrich what we have. So let's start with one of those plants, and it's this yellow-orange plant that you see that's uh, nothing more or less than our local monkey flower. And uh, this particular mimulus is, is this yellow-orange color that just enriches those colors around it. Now, um, if I wanted to have a low backup for yellow, in case the sulfur buckwheat is not doing well, I already have one in the year around uh, Sundance or Daisy. Uh, if, if we want yellow in a taller plant, we already have that as well in an island bush poppy. And, but I've added another large uh, plant, a bush that's a yellow bloomer, and that's the yellow bush lupin. Because it brings that nice, uh, beautiful leaf shape and bloom shape of the lupin. Now, uh, how about the verbena, the, the bluish purple plant that we rely on so much? Well, we have another backup here in the woolly blue curls. And, and this is a plant that I love. It's, it, it, it also blooms, even though it starts a little later than some, it does bloom for a couple of months. And it's a great plant for pollination uh, for the, the bees as well as the hummingbirds. And it's, it's got a, a a little different look to the shrub. It's more as the upright uh, blooms that are just uh, uh, unique unto themselves and it's one of my favorite shrubs. For a low blue backup, 
uh, I almost have to wait till next month when uh, the foothill penstemon comes into bloom. But a couple have started to bloom early, so uh, here's one of those. Now, um, there's two other blue or purple plants that I think of in March and April. And in March, of course, the obvious plant that I look forward to is the California lilac, the ceanothus. You have them in several species with blooms, everything from white to dark blue. But I think my favorite bloom is the medium blue of the Ray Hartman. And that plant also is fast growing and gives me a, a full bush that uh, in the month of March, uh, the whole bush looks like it's blue. It's just wonderful. And uh, the other plant that I enjoy so much, uh, it comes in April, and the native iris. And I have two species of that. I have the Douglas iris and the Del Norte iris, which is the thinner leafed uh, iris of the very northern part of California. My favorite color in iris is, is kind of a soft purple. Like the monkey flower, it brings its own shading of color to enrich what's around it. And uh, so the, the two irises are, are among my favorites that time of year. Now how about a backup plant for the poppies. Sometimes the poppies in a certain area may not last the full two months. So I do have a good backup, just about the exact color of our, our poppies, and, and that's uh, the orange monkey flower. I associate the name Mimulus terracotta with the particular color that, that I see in the nurseries. Uh, now for a white, low blooming plant, uh, in case the uh, the, the, the white monkey flower is not doing well. The white poppy provides a great backup for that. And um, Annie's, at Annie's Annuals, it's been sold for years under the name Alba. And it can, a, a healthy plant of that can have a couple of hundred blooms, so it can have a lot of color as well. There's two white blooming plants, the blooms I really enjoy. And one is the Western Service Berry. It only blooms for about a week or so, but it's a plant that has beautiful bloom, delicious berries, and uh, uh, I just love seeing it when I'm in the Sierra. And that's a plant that it makes great pies up in Western Canada. They call it the Saskatoon berry. Uh, the other uh, bush white bloom that I love so much is the snowdrop bush, Styrax officinalis. And the, the blooms are like little bells, and when the wind starts blowing, I almost expect to hear them ringing. Uh, ours is almost a tree form, which kind of reminds me that Doug Tallamy says don't overlook the trees for their benefits to butterflies and moths. And I find the same thing is true with bee pollination. Uh, a couple of years ago I was walking uh, in my backyard and I heard what sounded like a hive of bees overhead. And I looked up and it was not a hive, but it was a series, a, a group of bees on almost every bloom, it seemed like, of our mountain mahogany, a white bloom and up higher in the tree. Uh, the other white blooming tree that I enjoy so much is our madrone. Not only does it have the bark color of the manzanita, but also the bloom shape of the manzanita, which shouldn't be surprising because they're both in the same plant family. Um, the, the color that I've had the most difficulty uh, with in terms of producing splashy color in the spring uh, is red. And th my best plant for that is uh, the red poppies. Sometimes it's been called red sheaf, red glow. There's different names to it, but the, the red poppy can provide this beautiful reddish orange color. And uh, it just gives a, a, a lot of uh, spark to the garden. Uh, my backup plant for that is, is a uh, uh, firecracker penstemon, or pen Eaton's penstemon. And that plant, I just love the looks of it because off of a single spike, you've got a series of parallel blooms coming down. It just it reminds me of so many of the mountain plants I enjoy so much. I've been trying to make bigger patches of, of Eaton's penstemon. Uh, the other plant that I've had to supply red early in the year uh, is my uh, uh, red monkey flower that I've seen growing natural in uh, Southern California, Memulus punicius. There's two other red blooming plants that I think of when I think of March and April. One is the redbud tree, 
can either be a large bush. I usually train mine to be small trees. Once again, like the monkey flower and the iris, it brings its own interpretation of color, kind of a, a different shade of red than we typically see. And it's just delightful because the whole, the whole plant looks red at that point. The other plant, the red blooming plant, that I really look forward to in April is my favorite current, the blood current, Ribes sanguinium. And I try to get it, when I buy it, I try to get it as red as I can. Um, but uh, there's one other red plant I want to talk about. It's not splashy like these others. It's very subtle and inconspicuous, but delightful nonetheless. And that's the red version of the coral bells. It's called a canyon bell. Anyway, these are the plants, some of the plant blooms that I enjoy in March and April. Okay, new life in the garden this time of year isn't just about the plants. It's also about the animals. The, the, I think the animal that I most enjoy looking forward to this time of year is the pipevine swallowtail butterfly. Uh, last year I was talking in, in one of these tours about the fact that they've become resident in our garden now. They don't just come and lay eggs, they come in nectar and, and, and do their uh, mating squirrels and, and just hang out, egg laying, whatever. And, but I was saying last year how uh, I've never seen him do a chrysalis. Well, after I, two weeks after I said that, all of a sudden I, I spotted about a dozen caterpillars walking up various walls of our house and building chrysalis in plain sight. So uh, they, they built those in May and this March, they started to emerge from those chrysalis. It takes about a half an hour for them to to get their, you know, flutter around a bit and get their wings strong enough to be able to fly. And it's beautiful seeing them get back into their activity. The three of my favorite bees, native bees are here this time of year. The uh, big digger bees are still around. They started with the manzanitas and they're still on some of the bigger blooms. Uh, the osmia bee, a little kind of black, black with blue or green tinges, is on the foothill penstemon and the phacelia. And some of the sweat bees are on the poppies. And there's other bees as well. Uh, but, uh, and, and of course, it's not just insects in the air. The ground is, act, is, is alive with western fence lizards. I, I brought in three. I snared three years ago because there was none here. And now there's probably 30 of them running around the yard. And, and once in a while, I even see the alligator lizard, which is probably a little less common. So. Uh, and, of course, the birds. The birds have been very active in our yard, and some of them have migrated out now. The last week of April, we, the um, white crown sparrows and golden crown sparrows leave. So it's a time in which there's a lot of life everywhere you look in the garden. It's an exciting time, and I hope I've said something to excite you for your own gardening. Thank you very much for being here.